Broadcast permission for the following program is made possible by the Columbia Broadcasting System. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... G. Marshall. It's a wise father that knows his own child, said the great poet. From this, we may also infer that it's a wise child that knows his own father. In the same vein, we are also told the child is the father of the man. If we carry this much further, we may discover it's impossible to distinguish between the two. Therefore, when a man dies, does he live on in his son? Well, now, that might all depend on how you define dying and what you consider living. But, Orville, your father is dead. Is he, Mother? Of course, 30 years ago, in France. He was killed in action. You know that. How do I know that, Mother? Orville, what's come over you? I know it because you tell me so. And I... I grew up believing it. But it's true. Then... Show me, Mother. Show you what? Something. Anything. When a soldier dies in battle, the War Department notifies you. It's on record. Papers. Show me something, Mother. Anything. It says he's dead. Our mystery drama, Strike Force was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Michael Wager. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Life is a pattern. Sometimes it's even cast in a mold. The days slip by, one so much like the other it's almost impossible to tell them apart. And after a while, why bother? We like our routine, the well-worn grooves that guide our journey through life. The Watsons are entertaining the Sandersons at dinner. Predictably, this is Wednesday night. The Watsons are Andrea and Bob. The Sandersons are Orville and Alice. Andrea Watson is Dr. Orville Sanderson's mother. Bob is Orville's stepfather. Alice is Orville's wife. Have you got all that? All right. Dinner goes quietly, happily. These people know each other, like each other, even love each other. I know nobody should, but will anyone have more dessert? Where did Mm. you get that silver serving spoon, Andrew? Oh, do you like it, Alice, dear? Bob, you think I should get back into the market? This lovely spoon was a wedding (laughs) gift, Alice. That is, from my first wedding, when I married Orville's father. You're probably wondering why I'm using it tonight. Since you brought it up? Yes. Well, Bob and I have been married, what, oh, 30 years now. 31, darling. (laughs) (laughs) And I finally feel secure enough to use some of the things from my first marriage. I'll bet you are. No, the truth of the matter, Alice, I'd forgotten all about it, and I was cleaning out one of the cupboards. Isn't it lovely? I even remember who gave it to us. Polifax. Polifax, Mother? And why do I remember that name? Because it's such an odd one. Major Polifax. He was Orville's father's battalion commander. The man must have had excellent taste. Oh, yes. He was built like a gorilla. And yet he he was a very aesthetic person. I remember one evening, we were also having dinner. Somehow or other, the conversation got around to books. And I happened to ask Major Polifax, what is your favorite reading? And you know what he answered? The Iliad. The (laughs) Iliad? Homer's Iliad. And in Greek, no less. Well, he's dead. All of them are dead. May the Lord rest their souls. And your father. Well, now isn't anyone going to have more pocket? I'll have some, Andrea. Uh, Bob, you really can't afford the calories. No. (laughs) I know, Dr. Orville. But it's an affirmation of faith in your mother's fantastic skill. A very modest slot. To answer your question, Orville... Which question? Should you get back into the market? 
Well, you haven't left it. I did, too. You sold out all my common stocks and put me into bonds and treasury notes. Well, you're still in the money market. When I see some good values in common stocks... Oh, so. Bob, I wasn't questioning your integrity. Well, you should always question your broker, Oval. There's the phone. Oh, I'll answer. Well, not you, Bob. You've done a terrific job for me over the years. Hmm. Hello? I really don't know where I'd have been without you. Dr. Sanderson? Oh, yes. He's here. Just a moment. Orville. Well, I hope that's not important. Hello? Oh, yeah, I see. All right, about, about an hour. Darling, I've got to make a call tonight. Oh, I didn't think you doctors made house calls anymore. <laughs> I've got to stop at the morgue. Ooh, how gruesome. Now, Alice, death is a fact of life. It's hardly a suitable topic for a dinner table. Is he also this way at home, Alice? <laughs> you get used to him, Mother. Why do you have to stop off at the, uh... The morgue. Well, you know, I agreed to work for the coroner's office and duty calls. But in the midst of dinner... Oh, dinner's about over. We're going to leave soon anyhow. I'll get your coats, Orville. You said something very nice to Bob just before, Orville. Did I, Mother? Yes. When you told him he'd done a terrific job for you, and you don't know where you'd have been without him. Well, it's true. Bob's always been so self-conscious of the fact that he hasn't been your real father, and he's tried so hard to make up for it. Well... When you get down to it, he has been my real father. Who else did I have? Orville Sanderson Sr. was a man of glamour. Lived an adventurous life, and he died a hero's death. I think the real heroes in this world are the Bob Watsons, who plod along and do their job. Oh. We ought to tell him that more often. Alice, I'll drop you at the house, and then go to the morgue. Sorry to get you over here, Doc, at this hour of the night. Oh, it's all right, Benny. And for what? Look at him. He's just a bum. Now, now that he's dead, he may be an angel. <laughs> Fair chance. <laughs> just skin and bones. Hardly anything to him. Yeah. The reason they want to have an autopsy is because it's a homicide. Yeah, I can see what appears to be a nasty blow on the head. Yeah, that must have done him in. Him and another bum is having an argument. Over what? Over who knows? What do bums argue about? Some rat got booze, more than likely. We know who he is? Yeah. He's a bum. Now, let me see if I can find any identifying marks. Oh, ho, ho. he's got himself a beaut. What's that? Well, look, uh, it's the greatest tattoo mark I've ever seen. Here, raise up his arm. Look on the inside. It's just above the elbow, you see? Oh. It's a rattlesnake. All coiled up to strike. And there's a bolt of lightning on either side of them. And it says, uh... Hey, Doc. Doc, what's the matter? Hey, Doc, are you all right? What? I'm sorry, Mother. Oh, it's all right, dear. I, I know it's very late. Don't worry about it. Is... Is Bob asleep? Well, yes. Want me to wake him? No. No, not for this. Not for what, Orville? Strike force. Strike force? Yes, Mother. Strike force. You remember strike force? Oh. oh. My father's ranger battalion? Yes. Well, yes, I... I hadn't thought of that in years. And the insignia of the battalion, remember? Well, I, I think so. I s saw that insignia tonight. Yes? And not on a sleeve, not on a shoulder patch but inscribed on a man's skin. Orville. A tattoo. They all tattooed that insignia under their arm. Who... Who, who was the man? Uh, a derelict. Well, what had happened to him? He was murdered in a drunken brawl, hardly more than skin and bones, wasted away by too much alcohol, not enough food. And, and yet this poor, pathetic bag of bones was once big and brawny and bursting with vitality in the peak of condition. The finest fighter in the United States Army. Yes. They were the best in strike force. But, Mother, this man... This man must have known my father. He... He may have been my father's best friend. He may... He may have been there when my father died. Poor man. All the time, I kept looking at him. I kept thinking... You knew my father. You... Must have known my father. Oh, yes. To see that in Sydney, I... Why, it must have been a terrible shock. Mother... Mother, we could do something for him. 
Well, what is there we can do now? Well, we, we can't let him disappear into a nameless grave in Potter's Field. He, uh, he deserves better than a pauper's funeral. Oh, well, of course. He, he was one of my father's friends. Then we shall give him a decent burial. Mother, mother, do you suppose you could identify him? Me? Oh, but, but he's been so long ago. And the man must have undergone such drastic changes. Yes, but mother, if, if you could recognize him, I, oh, I know it's difficult for you, but if you would... Why if... are you so determined to know, dear? For my father's sake. It, it would be doing something for his memory. Oh, but... To go to the morgue. We'd better go, Andrea. Bob. I was wakened by someone coming in, so I got up and I... Uh, <clears throat> well, I heard what Orville said to you, dear. I I'm frightened. Orville and I will be with you. There's nothing to be afraid of. Just stand over here, Mother. I is this where they keep... Yes, yes, Mother. Look, we'll, we'll get this over as, as quickly as we can. Okay, Benny. Look out, folks. Mother. Oh. Mother. I, I, I... Try, try, try to remember. Oh, no, I, I, I can't seem to. Andrea, dear, isn't he at all familiar? Try, I, I... try to remember, Mother. Are you sure you never saw him before? I, I... oh, no. He does look familiar. Well, Bob... You never knew any of these fellows, did you? Uh, no. But your mother used to describe it. What is familiar about this one, Andrea? Didn't you once tell me about that officer friend of Orville Senior's? Oh, yes. Yes, that's right. I, I remember now. Uh, with the funny name? Y yes, Polyfax. It's Mortimer Polyfax. It's Major Polyfax... The battalion commander. Are you sure, Mother? Are you, Andrea? Oh, yes. Yes, it's Mortimer Polyfax. You see, he, he used to visit your father and me very often. But you said he used to look like a gorilla. This fellow is... He must have been handsome at one time. Oh, what I meant was that he, he looked tough. Uh, Polyfax was handsome, too... Ruggedly handsome, if you know what I mean. Major Polifax. Yes. Mortimer Polifax, scholar, soldier. And my father's best friend. Yes. Well, it's it's our duty to bury him. Yes, we'll have Bob make the arrangements. No, Mother. These are arrangements I want to make myself. <laughs> Orville, it's four o'clock in the morning. I know, Alice. Are you still looking at those pictures? My father in uniform. And here's his friend, Major Polifax. I suppose the Major changed after all these years. Oh, drastically. He was unlucky. He should have died in glory. Instead, he lived in degradation for all these years. A bum. If another doctor had been on call, nobody would have ever known. But we'll give him a meaningful service, a decent coffin, a respectable grave... It was my father's brother. We'll give him a hero's burial. Of course. You just said it. He deserves more than just a quiet private service here. He should have a full military funeral at the Arlington National Cemetery. But it, is it possible? Well, of course this man was Major Polifax, commander of the Strike Force Ranger Battalion. If he's not entitled to full military honors, who is? What a great idea. I'll start making arrangements the first thing in the morning. Bob, why did you insist on my going to the morgue? You had no choice. I certainly did. I could have refused. Well, he wanted you to go. Had you turned him down, the question would have haunted him for the rest of his life. What question? You know what question. He needed to be told that... that the man lying on the slab in the morgue was not his own father. But why did you get me to say it was Polifax? Because it had to be somebody... It couldn't be allowed to remain a mystery. The book had to be closed and put away forever. And we've done that. But Bob, I... We'll have a quiet, dignified private service, and that'll be the end of it. Yes. Yes, that'll be the end of it. 
Oh, Bob, I was terrified. Yes, I was too. The face. It was so changed. So ravaged. But I recognized him at once. So did I. Then he didn't die when we... when uh, we... Uh, Please, please. You, you mustn't even think about it. Bob, do you know what it means? It means that we didn't murder him. Henry, you must never we say... We tried our best, but we didn't. Don't even think about at it. At least his blood was not on our hands. That's something to be grateful for. Gratitude comes in many forms. And to learn that you have not committed a murder is one of them. If you thought this is going to be a typical family story, you can see now you'll have to rethink your position. And Act Two, which I shall bring in a few moments, becomes even more untypical. Or maybe it is typical. Fathom five, thy father lies. Of his bones are coral made. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Nothing of him that doth fade, but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. We're talking today about dead fathers who were war heroes once long ago. And about some history that is being rewritten and some identities that are about to be counterfeited. Oh, hello, Mother. Good morning, Orville. Andrea, you're here early. Well, have you forgotten, Alice? We're to play tennis this morning. Oh, that's right. And isn't this late for you, Orville? Aren't you due at the hospital for rounds or whatever? Orville has canceled his appointment for the day. Oh, really? Yep, I'm flying out of Washington, Mother. What's happening there? Well, I have to make arrangements for the funeral. The funeral? Who's? Major Polifax. Aren't we having a private little service here? Nope, that's been changed. Why don't it? This is going to be the full works, full military honors. But why? Well, that's what Polifax would have wanted. He was a professional soldier, and that's what he's going to get. Oh, but but how can you... I don't know, but I'm going there to find out. Orville... Mother, I'll miss the plane. We'd better hurry, too, Andrea. We have the tennis court at nine sharp. But I... I should be back by early evening. <laughs> Darling, is it important? I have this very special client coming in for lunch. He's going to Washington to arrange for an official funeral. Oh. Well, maybe. Maybe what? I don't know. Bob, he's going to find out. He's going to find out. No, he won't. He won't find out anything. Are you sure? Yes, yes, I'm sure. I'm reasonably sure. Captain, that's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. You're talking about the late Major Mortimer Polifax, two L's. That's right. Commanding officer of the 918th Ranger Raiding Battalion. Now on a strike force. Yes, single word, strike force. Look, Captain Carey, I... I think... Well, I know we've absolutely identified the man. I know he's entitled to a military funeral. Yes, that's true. But he's already had it. Had what? His military funeral. When? Where? How? He only died the day before yesterday. He's still in the morgue. Uh... Dr. Sanderson, according to the record I have here, uh, Major Polifax Mortimer, uh, no middle initial, was killed in combat. What are you saying? I'm reading from his file. He was killed in action in a town called Seltz in Alsace-Lorraine on December 27th, 1944. That's impossible. Well, these are the facts. He's been positively identified. Major Polifax has been identified by Mrs. Robert Watson of Philadelphia. Not according to the official record. The official record? Captain Carey, how many times has the body of a soldier killed in combat been wrongly identified? Very rarely, Oh, Doctor. don't tell me these things don't happen. Oh, they do. Uh, but in movies and in novels. Oh, Captain, look, I respect your opinion, but I still think my mother is right and, and the army is wrong. That's possible, isn't it? Uh, theoretically, anything is possible. But there's a very simple solution to the whole problem, you know. Fingerprints. I'm sorry, Orville. He did resemble the Major. No, Mother. 
He wasn't the major. That's been established. And uh, I wasn't too surprised. Oh? Uh-huh. Because from the moment I laid eyes on that man's body, I had a stranger sensation. I, I had the feeling he was my father. Your father? You looked at him. You... You thought he was this Major Polifax. Why? Well, from what I remembered of the Major, from so many years ago, there was a a slight resemblance. But didn't he look anything at all like my father? Your father? No. No. Then... Then why do I have this feeling? Why? Well... Well, we'll soon find out if he is or not. How can he be your father? Your father died in France. He died in the Ardennes Forest. There could have been a mistake. Oh, no. No, not about things like that. Uh, That's what this captain said down in Washington. But they're willing to check out the fingerprints. I thought they already did. Yes, against those of Major Polifax. Now they have to find out if they match my father's. You know, I'll tell you something, Mother... I'm sure they will. We'll have to tell him the truth, Bob. Why will we have to tell him anything? Because he'll only find out for himself. What will he find out? Bob, I told you I'm frightened. Nothing is going to happen. He looked at that body in the morgue and he knew. He knew it was his father. How? How did he know? Andrea, just don't lose your self-control. How did he know? He'll never be able to prove it. He won't have to. For him, it'll be enough just to believe it. What are we going to do? Darling, I keep telling you, we don't have to do anything. Or will you have to get some rest? I will. As soon as this identification thing is straightened out. It can't be your father. Then, Alice... Why do I feel so sure? Uh, I don't know. I, I wish I didn't feel this way, but I, I can't help it. I, I keep going to the morgue. I, I look at him. And I become more and more convinced. I spoke to your mother and to Bob. And they tell me that your father was killed in the Ardennes Forest. It could be a mistake. They were notified by the defense department. Since when did my mother and my stepfather accept things just because some government official... Has told them that... Orville, I just have a feeling of... A very uneasy feeling. I'm suddenly afraid. Of what? Well, these past few days, ever since you came across that body in the morgue... I'd really rather you didn't refer to it as that body. It's my father. Orville, I'm... Well, let's say you happen to be right. See where that takes us. Ask the first questions. If he's your father... What is he doing in the morgue? You know that. He was killed in a street brawl. He was supposed to be in his grave all these years in an American military cemetery in France. Now, why isn't he still buried? Because he wasn't killed there. For the sake of argument, true. And the army made a mistake. So, he's been alive all these years. Where has he been living? How would I know? Why didn't he come back to his wife and his infant son? I... I, Well... Maybe he... Maybe he had amnesia. Darling, that's what they have in the movies. Why did he become a bum? Don't you call him a bum. All right. What do you want to call him? I don't know. Wait a minute. Maybe there's someone I... I can't ask. You, uh, you feeling all right? Are you treating you okay in here? Uh, who are you? I'm a doctor. Asked me to look at you. Listen, Doc, it's a bum rap. I didn't kill that guy. You didn't? It's a bum rap. Did... Did you know him? No, who? The man you are supposed to have killed. Doc, I'm thirsty. I ain't had a drink in look, so many... Look, try to clear your head and think. What was the name of the man? The man, the man they say you killed. 
His name? His name. Yeah, what was his name? Hey, Doc, do you suppose you'd give me a drink? Oh, look, look, look. He had a tattoo on his arm. Would that help you remember? Tattoo. Tattoo. With, with, with a snake. Yeah. That, 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 that was what the fight was about. The snakes. Them snakes on his arms. I could see the snakes starting to come after me. What are you talking about? He, he has this tattoo on his arm. And it had this, this big snake on it. Big snake had become a lot of little snakes. And everyone was out to bite you. That's what happened. See what I mean? Snakes? Yeah, yeah. See, the snakes would be crawling all over his arms. And he'd yell for me to help him. He, he, he'd holler, kill him, kill him, before they get me. Well, there, there was this big stick. And I picked it up and I began hitting the snakes. I guess I hit him on the head by mistake. It was an accident. I was only trying to help him out. The snakes would have poisoned him to death. And that's how it happened? Uh, uh, you try to help him. Okay, why? Why? Because he was my friend. Well, if he was your friend, surely... Surely you must remember his name. Name? How long did you know him? It's hard to remember. But try to think. You asked a lot of questions. Yeah, you, you asked questions very well. I was good at asking questions once. Oh, yes, I could ask what the best... What of... was his name? You're a doctor. Take my advice. Keep away from the booze. I was a member of the bar. <laughs> That's funny. You should have heard me cross-examine. That's why we were such good friends. Who? Great, great friends with whom? Old Snake Arm. I used to practice with him. He didn't mind. You see, I, I may come back one day and I had a shop in my forensic skill. What was his name? I would say to him, Sandy, take the stand. Sandy. Sandy, why did you call him Sandy? Because, because his name was, was Alexander. Alexander? No, no, no. It was Orville. If his name was Orville, why did you call him Sandy? Well, it's very simple. I call him Sandy because, because his name was Sanderson. <laughs> That's right. His name was... Orville Sanderson, uh, Sr. Orville Sanderson, Sr. And he did not fall in France during the Battle of the Ardennes Forest. He came back to America alive. And the Defense Department made a mistake. Or did they? Our story has taken a new turn. But bear in mind the direction has been set by a half-mad alcoholic. I shall return shortly with Act Three. At the very beginning, we said, the child is the father of the man. Childhood shows the man as morning shows the day. The father he never knew, the father who died young, lives in the memory of the son. In most cases, as the tragic hero. For this is the image the son wants to cling to. Perhaps it's the image the son must have. But an image is only a reflection. How easily it can be distorted or disturbed. You say his name was Orville Sanderson, Sr.? No, that's what he said. You see, Doctor, it's evidence that cannot be established other than by, by hearsay. Why? Why would he say his name was Orville Sanderson Sr. if it wasn't? That's a good point. <laughs> I don't remember. That's what the booze does to you. You don't remember anymore. You could have been someone I knew all my life. Or someone I just met that night. Which was he? Well, let me think. Try to remember. Yeah, yeah, try to remember. That's oh, that's what I kept saying to Sandy. Try to remember. Try to remember what? Who, who they are. Who the people are of uh, war. Who try to murder him. Someone try to murder him? His wife. Her lover. He used to say, if I can only remember their names, you and I, we'd be on easy street for life. What are you saying about a wife and a lover? They tried to kill him, yes. When? Oh, 
I don't know. Try to think. Oh, no, I can't do that anymore. I, I, I can't think straight. All I can do is drink. That's all I want. Please get me a drink. I'm sorry I can't do that. Then who needs you? Who wants you? Get out of here. Please, I'll, I'll help you all I can. Get out of here. God, God, get him out of here. What am I going to do? About what? My father. I don't understand, this, darling. This man, this derelict, he identified my father. Well, now, that's hardly a reliable... He knew my father's name. According to the Defense Department, your father died in France more than 30 years my ago. My father, you... You don't know what he meant to me. But you never knew him. I knew him. <laughs> I'd look at his picture all those years I was growing up. Secretly, be because I didn't want to make Bob feel badly. You never told me this. I... I was such a puny kid. When, I, when I'd get pushed around, Bob would say, you look excel in other things. But I'd look at his picture, and my father would say, get in there, kid, and fight. And I did. And after a while... I understand, All my life, darling. whenever things were rough, I... I remember there were courses in medical school. I, I, I didn't see how I'd ever pass, and I'd look at my father's picture and... Orville, I can't believe what you're trying to tell me. I can't believe that your mother... And Bob tried to murder, actually believed they murdered your father. How would he know about it? Who? This, this Jerry. Jerry who? Oh, he can't remember his last name. But he can remember a crazy story. It isn't a crazy story. That's right. It isn't. Well, then you admit it's true. No, I admit it isn't crazy. It's one of the oldest and best stories in the world. Oh, what are you talking about? The Iliad. The Iliad by Homer. Now, what what does that have to do with this? It's the story that you're telling me now. Listen. The Trojan War, Agamemnon, king of Athens, commander of the Greek Oh, come forces. on, I know that story. You're actually living it. Agamemnon's wife, Clytemnestra, <sighs> had a lover, Aegisthus. When Agamemnon <sighs> came home alive, they murdered oh, him. Oh, Alice, that has nothing to do and with... the son, Orestes, the son of Agamemnon and Clytemnestra avenged his father and murdered his mother and her lover. Now, isn't that what you're building toward? Alice. You can now believe that Andrea and Bob murdered or wanted to murder... The... Or thought they murdered my father. But how can you say that? At the morgue. Didn't you see the look of shock on my mother's face? Don't you tell me they didn't recognize my father. We don't know. It's your father. Just because some alcohol... We are going to find out. The Defense Department will match the fingerprints. And then we'll know. What will we know? We will know officially what I know to be true now. That my father didn't die in France, that he came back, and that they lied to me. And what will you do? What Orestes did? I want the truth. What will you do with it? <laughs> Darling, this could all be in your mind. The Iliad. Listen... I remember. It was only two nights ago. We were having dinner with your mother and Bob, and the mention of Major Polifax's name came up. And somehow, the Iliad got into the conversation. Oh, yes, I remember. It was the Major's favorite reading. And all that somehow started something You're saying your... that it's all in my mind? Yes. And when you hear from the Defense Department, they'll tell you that this man was not your father, and that will be the end of it, and you will be thoroughly ashamed of yourself. I've tried to talk to him on the phone. Andrea, he could be busy. He's a doctor, after all. Oh, he's avoiding me. Why? He knows. He suspects. Now, please, darling. He knows that dead man is his father. Something tells him, and it's my fault. Now, don't say that. At dinner the other night, I mentioned Major Polifax. Why did I have to bring up that name? Well, it's true. You shouldn't have. And that started his mind thinking. Why did you mention the spoon as a gift from Major Polifax? It isn't true. We never even knew Major Polifax. Well, once you create a falsehood like we did, it becomes a, a world of its own. You feel that every now and then you have to enhance it. I... I just felt I had to say that. Well, in any event, he would have been called to the morgue, and 
He would have seen that strike force insignia, and we'd be right where we are now. Where are we, Bob? I don't know. I have a feeling it's going to keep unfolding itself until he'll know everything. And then what will we do? Then we'll have to tell him the truth. That we wanted to kill his father? We didn't want to kill him, but we had to. As it turns out, we didn't do it. But he'll never believe us. No one will ever believe us. And I'll lose my son. I'll lose him forever. I'm sorry, Mr. Sanderson. Now, look here, Captain Carey. You are saying to me that this man is not my father. That's not what I'm saying, Dr. Sanderson. What I'm saying is I don't know who he is. But his fingerprints... His fingerprints do not match anything in our service files. Then there has been a mistake. The files are wrong. You have the fingerprints of Lieutenant Orville Sanderson, a member of the 918th Ranger Raiders known as Strike Force. Doctor, there was no Lieutenant Sanderson in the Strike Force Battalion. That's impossible. No record, no fingerprints. Nothing at all to indicate that he was even in the United States Armed Forces. I don't believe it. I said I was sorry. I have a picture of him. From the morgue here, you can see the Strike Force insignia tattooed under his arm. Now, that is the Strike Force insignia. The snake and the lightning, isn't it? Yes. Well, well, doesn't that prove that... All it proves is that this man, whoever he is or was, had the insignia tattooed under his arm. Orville. Orville, where have you been? Where haven't I been? All over Washington, D.C. They all say I have to accept what's in the official record. My father was never a member of the armed forces. Well, then the man, the derelict, He's not your father. He is. My mother and Bob lied to me. My father was never a soldier. He was a bum. They they tried to murder him many years ago, and somehow they didn't, and here he turns up now. Well. Well, what? I'm going to face him with it. <gasps> oh, please, Orville, what good will that do? They destroyed my father. They'll pay for it. What do you mean? Pay for it. How? I... I don't know yet. Orville. Mother, what are you doing here? We decided to wait for you. What for? Bob and I, we... We should talk. About... What? How you lied to me. Yes. Oh, Mother. All of it... Was a lie. Yes. My father was... Never in the army? No. No. You made it all up? Why? Because you needed it. You keep out of this. Don't talk that way to your father. He's not my father. Oh, please, please. All we need now are facts, not emotions. I don't think you can smooth talk your way out of this. Orville, you needed a war hero while you were growing up. We thought we'd give you one. Someone glamorous, exciting, not some old... Nose to the grindstone, stick in the mud like me. Don't talk that way, Bob. So, we read a magazine article about the Strike Force Rangers. They sounded like the most exciting troops in the world. So we decided to make your father one of them. And we used the name of the real Major Polifax to make it sound more authentic. And didn't you think I'd learn the truth one day? No, we didn't. And if you hadn't gone to the morgue that night, you still wouldn't know. He was my father, wasn't he? Yes. We recognized him immediately. If he wasn't in strike force, how did he get that tattoo? Why... Why did you try to kill him? Well... I won't tell you. Of course not. I'll tell you. You had an affair with... With my mother, he he found out you had to kill him. That's the truth, isn't it? Oh, no, no, Andrea, please. L let him believe that if he wants to. Orville is dead and can't defend himself. But he tried to destroy us while he was alive. He won't succeed now that he's dead. Your father was a thief. That's a lie! Andrea. It is. You've been checking fingerprints and looking up old records, but at the wrong place. 
Go downtown to the Hall of Justice. Andrea, don't, don't, don't. Look up Orville Sanderson, confidence operator, flim-flam artist. You know why he tattooed that insignia on his arm? So he could pose as a strike force ranger and trade off. I don't believe you. I married him because I was young and stupid. He deserted me the day after you were born. Now, you've said enough, Andrea, please. Bob helped me because he loved me. Orville had disappeared. But he came back when you were three years old. And he was crazy. Something had, uh, had snapped in his mind. He believed his own stories. He believed he had been in the war. And he accused me of betraying him with Bob. It wasn't his fault. He was mentally disturbed. And he had a gun. He forced Bob and me into a car. He drove us up to the mountains. He said he was going to kill us. And, and... I... I tried to get the gun away. The... There was an accident. We drove off the side of a hill. We had scratches, Andrea and I. But he... We thought he was dead. It was wild country, deserted country. We thought that would be the end of it. Maybe it was wrong, but we wanted him dead. Because as long as he was alive, we'd never have a moment's peace. Evidently, he didn't die. Now, years later, he turns up in the morgue, and you find him. That's the truth. You... You killed my father. No, darling. They didn't kill your father. They killed a man named Orville Sanderson Sr. Your father is Bob Watson. He always was, and he always will be. We'd better go now, Andrea. Orville, son, I... I... Come, Andrea. Yes, Mother, uh, Bob, where are you going? Oh, you, we... Uh, this is um, <clears throat> Wednesday night. Aren't we supposed to have dinner together? That's right. And it's supposed to be at our house. Well, well, we're here. <laughs> It's Wednesday night, which means that the Watsons and the Sandersons are having dinner together. Andrea Watson is Dr. Orville Sanderson's mother. Bob Watson is his stepfather. Alice Sanderson is Orville's wife. They are such a close-knit and devoted family. Things run so smoothly and comfortably. Practically everyone envies them. I shall return in just a few moments. was really Orville's father. Orville Sanderson Sr., who gave him his body, or Bob Watson, who gave him his mind. Both men have a very strong claim on Orville Sanderson Jr. And for a long time, Orville acknowledged both. But in the end, when he had to choose, he knew which one. Because it's a wise child that knows its own father. For you... Wisdom consists in knowing enough to tune us in seven times each week. Our cast included Michael Wager, Patricia Elliott, Mary Jane Higby, Court Benson, and Gilbert Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. The program was broadcast with the permission of the Columbia Broadcasting System.